while ago, I made this video here discussing, I think the title was something about apostolic mistake or Apostle Joseph Salman saying that um, some things written in the Bible are not actually the word of God, that um, the Bible itself, or to be specific, that we call this the Bible. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Not every word that is written here, please don't stone me. Please don't stone me yet. Not every word that is written here is called the word of God. Paul himself in the Bible was wrong at some instance um, with the things that um, are written in the Bible or what I say. Because Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, if we believe the scriptures, wrote to third of most of the New Testament. So he was just trying to point out the fact that even Paul himself made a couple of mistakes in the Bible. So um, another apostle seems to have responded to that, um, uh, maybe after, you know, some way, somehow listening to what Apostle Joshua Sermon had to say. I hope you know that there are many things that Paul said in the Bible that are wrong according to the character of God's word. How much of God's character do you know? Paul met the resurrection Jesus on the way to Damascus. You, have you even met the, <laughs> the, 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 the high five Jesus? By the character of God, some things that Paul says are not correct. Ah, you, little boy, you are suddenly, you and Paul, who knows God's character? Somebody was on his way to Damascus and Jesus appeared to him. You, who has appeared to you? One little thing that you call Jesus. You and Paul, who know the character of God better? Is it you that just came from the northern part of Nigeria? And how many years are you? How many years have, have you been with Christ? Two years in Asia, the Bible said all Asia had the gospel. All, not some. And there was no TV. And one little boy is saying, the guy made mistakes. Some people need to be beaten. Yes. Honestly. Yes. Is it because the nations, God in his mercy opened the nations for you, give you audience among the youth, when a novice is make a leader, the person will puff up, will become Lucifer. That's what the Bible says, we should not make novist leaders. Okay, then after also, he also reacted to the whole idea of, um, you know, remember, let me just take you down memory lane. This video right here, I made it um, right here on YouTube discussing about the whole idea of Apostle Joseph Sermon, you know, talking about Kobus himself, um, the man he went, would I say he went for impartation or would I say after seeing him on TV and the miracles he's done, he, he was hungry. Let me try to sound like um, those who love Apostle Joseph Sermon a lot. I, we know right here on the platform, we don't love or hate anyone. We face the facts, discuss them and move on to the next. So he was hungry for that kind of anointing or impartation that he went to South Africa there to be part of his program or what I say to be part of his teaching. And from there, he used his own mouth to explain or retell the story that um, Kubus himself told him as to, you know, how he went to different places, to graveyards, to people's altar to take out dust and a couple of things for him to make a concoction in an anointing oil and all those things. So if you have not watched this video, it's going to help you a whole lot. But anyway, you don't have to watch my own video or my own discussion of that. If you watch this video right here on YouTube, just go there, listen to him uninterrupted. Nobody is saying anything, no opinion. No one is sitting down here talking or saying something in the background and you'll be blessed, okay? So right here, I pick these videos, I listen to them, okay? And I give commentary about that. If that hurts you so much, you should stop watching me, okay? But looking at that context, I don't know if you people remember him saying something like this. One time, I started having encounters with the saints of old. I remember I started having encounters with many of those you call the generals and they would come to me and share mysteries and some of them would share with me where they failed in their own generation I remember in one of these encounters a middle height man came to me and after talking the light that beamed from him and when we were done talking, he turned and he was on his way going. And I looked at him and I said, you did not tell me your name, sir. And he looks at me and turns back and smiles. And he said, Paul. And he turned and walked away. I am a product of many anointings. 
I am a product of many encounters. Now, he has talked about his uh, celestial, or what I say, spiritual experiences. And one of them, he mentioned that he actually encountered Paul. Yeah, yeah. And the way he sounded, the people you call God's generals or something. Please, I asked this question for two times. Anytime I make videos, read the text on the screen. Most times, I can't, if I talk, if I say everything that is in my mind, my videos will be too long. Some people already complain that my videos are too long. Now I'm asking you, he talked about the term God's generals, okay? Even he attributed himself or more of like, you know, in that video, I talked about the fact of how he became a God's general, how he went here. So some of, most of you, I see people reading this, right in the comments, oh, God's general, God's general. I want you to tell me in the comments, maybe you have read the book God's general before. Tell me in the comments, what defines someone to be a God's general, please. Okay, and then define him for me as a God's general in the comments. I want to understand what you understand. If you don't have anything to say, let that pass. Okay, but looking at this right now, it is very often more of like something very common that I hear pastors themselves, you know, give their own personal testimony, how they get to see Isaiah, Moses, uh, uh, Paul, and all these experiences were you there no was i there no but because of maybe how you love this person and how you believe that person of course you can believe everything they say right come on this man right here i respect him a whole lot sadhu sandha Savaraj. i have seen this man myself with my two naked eyes all right if you are really really someone that um follows things in the christendom you know that he once came to nigeria for a youth conference i traveled from my city to lagos for this particular Youth conference here that Sadhu Sanders of Raj came to Nigeria for. I used to watch him on TV talk about how he met Moses, his, his celestial, or what I say, spiritual experiences, even how he has seen Jesus many times, and even his salvation story, a couple of other things. But I went there and I met, I saw him, I was part of his own program from beginning to the end. The videos are right here on social media. If you maybe check very well, you might see my head popping out somewhere. What am I trying to make you understand right here? Most times when they tell these stories and all that, it either builds faith in you or makes you see this person to be one special, unique person when it comes to um, relating with God. I don't know if you understand so to a great extent it builds this momentum around them or it builds this um energy around them that you know maybe makes them seen as god's generals as he would say or would i say make them seen as these people that are specially handpicked by god and all that so whatever comes out from their mouth is you know is yeah and amen okay now a couple of people have called him a false prophet as well because of he has made a couple of prophecies that didn't come to pass like national prophecies and all that but am i here to come and define who you believe to be a false prophet or not i don't have a business in that but if this same apostle Jesus sermon himself claimed to have met paul if you listen to the way he talked he said that most of these god's generals and the example he gave was paul i don't know how many more he gave he said that they tell him their mistakes or the mistakes they made in their generation. So him coming to come and correct Paul, or would I say, say that Paul was wrong in a couple of things he said in the scriptures. Was it a product of what Paul told him or a product of him reading the scriptures and saying that, okay, this thing that Paul said here is wrong. He only gave one example, even though he said that he's not going to give people the scripture of what he's talking about. So let him hold that secret and that knowledge to himself. With all due respect, sir, you are respected and loved. We are in a season where the wheat and the tars are growing together. A season where the sons of the kingdom and the sons of the wicked one are growing together. We are also in the season of the harvest. We are in the midst of this growing together. God is taking out lawlessness and bringing kingdom sons together. Now listen. What should sons of God do within this season? One, watch against the spirit of lawlessness. Don't listen to any how message. Don't jump into every church. Don't sit under every preacher who excites your your carnal emotions. I read two things today on Facebook that was it today or yesterday that really broke my heart. <coughs> this preacher 
who is telling everybody that Paul was wrong. The young preacher from Nigeria who, if, when I heard about him, I thought that, oh, God has had our prayers. He has raised young preachers who will help the church to understand that we are not mad when we're talking about these things. And this man began to go the dimensions he's going. Now he's not saying, Paul made mistakes. That by the character of God, there are things that Paul said that that were not correct. And I ask myself, you and Paul, who know the character of God better? Is it you that just came from the northern part of Nigeria? And how many years are you? How many years have, have you been with Christ? Is it because the nations, God in his mercy opened the nations for you, give you audience among the youth, and you are now saying by the character of God, how much of God's character do you know? Paul met the resurrection Jesus on the way to Damascus. You, have you even met the, <laughs> the, 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 the high five Jesus? The, the pride and the arrogance of people. That's what the Bible says. We should not make novice leaders. When a novice is make a leader, the person will puff up, will become Lucifer. So, he made that statement and I, I was shocked. Now, people, two people didn't hide it. They wrote on Facebook straight. I read, oh, when we heard this preacher, we love his message and we're listening to him. One lady said he was her, is the word she used. She listened to him so much, absorbed these teachings. Look at what the two of them testified the same thing. The lady said it was during that period she enjoyed his teaching, but during that period she was she became a sexual pervert. There's a word she used. She was a terrible sexual pervert while she was listening to the man. Did that young man say the same thing? In my days of listening to him was when I fell, was when I began to live a life of sin with that bothering. But he was preaching good. Listen, a good message that is not producing the character of Christ in you is a wrong message. That shows that the messenger has a problem. There's a breach in the life of the messenger. That's why his message is not producing the potency of righteousness in your life. There's a breach in his life. No matter how good the message is, there's a breach. Now listen carefully. And I said to myself, how many youth, because these people are youth, how many youth who are following this man are living the same life of perversion by drinking from the fountain? How many? Listen. Be careful of the good messages you listen to. Be careful. The spirit of lawlessness is subtle. Most preachers, when you sit under them, they baptize you with the spirit of lawlessness. You are hearing very good message, but the baptism you experience under them is the baptism of the spirit of lawlessness. That is why you cannot live right listening to a preacher who has the capacity to bring men under the baptism of the spirit of lawlessness. No matter how powerful you are, you have no beauty if there's no submission. The beauty of, of power is submission. Who are you answerable to? Who corrects things? Do you know that the church has been without a system that corrects us? That's everybody can say anything. Someone woke up one morning and said, Paul made a mistake. By the character of God, some things that Paul says are not correct. Ah, you, little boy, you are suddenly, you and Paul, who knows God's character? Somebody was on his way to Damascus and Jesus appeared to him. You, who has appeared to you? One little thing that you call Jesus. So there's nobody checking anybody. Somebody will get up and say, God has said, we should pour oil in the city. The Lord told me. Everybody will say, Amen. There's no checking system. That's why the voice of God is crying. 
against such nonsense are you understanding me okay so we have a balance um, analysis here so the, the lady here said he is actually very correct if you are a true bible student you understand the angle from which he's speaking so just to make you apostle Jesus sermon followers um impressed i would say take for instance paul said women shouldn't preach she she should be silent it's he also said women should cut off their hair if they are not using a veil another one is the argument we have in marriage today about wives submitting and then husbands love your wife god didn't actually say that even at the first marriage let's be honest some of the solutions paul provided was his own opinion not from god what what, what was that wrong maybe not but it's wrong to assume paul's teachings weren't a little bit flawed okay so note the person now went on to say note anything written by a man will definitely be flawed you can never rule out personal opinions in stuff like this all right so the person now says finally all scriptures are given by god i was then beginning to wonder okay the bible is not the same as scriptures bible contains some scriptures not all if you are in doubt, do your research. So this person right now who is a keen follower of Apostle Jesus Sermon says, you know, the Bible is not, it concerns some scriptures and not all. So you can, I, I leave you to think whatever you think about um, that, all right? I'm just simply analyzing. So, Elijah, Elijah, send down fire. Bless my so um, Apostle Takim actually reacted to both this idea and also his testimony of how he went to different places uh, or went to different, uh, yeah, how he went to different places for impartation. So he made a Facebook post, which I kind of like saved a while ago. He had told us the source of his anointing, which is charismatic witchcraft, okay? So if you have watched the video, you understand what exactly, um, what he's trying to refer to um, right here. But note, even Apostle Joshua Sermon himself, he said it with his own mouth, he's a product of many anointings, okay? I don't know what is wrong with people, whether they don't hear with their head or not. Some people, when, when I played, I just simply re-echoed a video that he made, he said the things himself. And someone came and said, ah, did you miss out the part that he, he said he personally encountered God? Oh, is it because I played what um, 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 Mensa Otterbell himself said or something? He said it himself here, he is a product of many anointings. Is there any anointing greater than the anointing that comes from God himself? I don't know. So when you say you are a product of many anointings, please explain that to me. Explain it to me. If you cannot explain it, just step aside. Let's go on. I know. Oh, hey, listen. Some of you that are here fighting yourself and killing yourself in the comments and arguing and laying curses on top of your family. Apostle Joshua Selman is not on social media. He doesn't listen to all these things. So I don't know why you are stressing yourself. But anyway, just stay here. Defend either of your fathers, Apostle Takim, Apostle Joshua Selman, whoever you are defending. Let me be here and be giving you the news of what is happening. Said, Gathering anointings from the dead, what else is necromancy? Apostle Joshua Selman himself said with his own mouth. Am I the one that made him say what he said? He said with his own mouth. He was echoing the story of Kubus. Come on, these people. This is what he had to say about the situation. Do you think that the whole thing of, uh, you know, anointing from graves and this and that, is that necromancy? Is that what you think? Some of you will not, you will never answer the questions I ask. The world is shaking. You will never answer the question I ask. You will just go straight to <laughs> insulting me and whatever. But anyway, Sha, you are still commenting. You are still adding engagement to the video. If you cannot make an informed input for people to read your comments and also get to learn what you think or what defense you have or something, you are wasting your time because in the end, even me, myself, <laughs> you don't know what is going on. You don't know what is going on. And just for me to add to a particular point, all right, um, Ubat Angel and one of his pastors. You see, when I tell you that most times these people preach themselves, you don't believe me, ba? I look stupid, but thank you because in my stupidity, you are still able to pick one or two or be able to learn something. This man right here, listen to what he said. Angel in me, then the spirit of Jesus. I know what I'm talking about. 
Because I have used the spirit of Jesus before it didn't work. But when I now tap into the grace of property of an angel, everything is working. Oh, I'll boast my father. I told you I have no other message to preach to the world than prophet of an angel. You, you can talk about the Bible. Me, I'll talk about my spiritual father. Do you see this man outrightly, openly discrediting the person of Jesus that he doesn't, like the anointing of Jesus has not helped him, but the anointing of Ubat Angel? Um, let me ask you a question. Please, my dear wonderful Christians. Does what he said make sense to you? He's telling you that it's the anointing of a faith. Oh God. If you have not watched this video I made in the past, some of you think that I that, that yesterday was where, where I started the make commentary about church matter. Not be today. You don't take. Oh, so if you just found me out yesterday, one well, welcome to the party. Because right here, everything is dissectable. Whether it's coming from poop. Or, or whatever we have discussed them here on the platform to you oh no 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 no. it's spiritual i don't understand spiritual things george is a canal man but even in my carnality like you have labeled me this doesn't make sense at all because if jesus is the center of it all why would you say that even the spirit of jesus so the spirit that Obad angel has is it of god or of something else these people, they literally stand on the pulpit. This one has even been able to come out boldly to discredit the, the spirit of Jesus and say the spirit of Ubat Angel. The same Ubat Angel that I saw last time preaching about uh, Pastor Chris and saying Pastor Chris has the, his prophetic anointing is national. That he's only thought he was, he used to decode, you know, uh, small family matters, phone numbers, um, football matches, this and this. But the, the prophetic anointing on Pastor Chris is on a different level entirely. They literally stand and preach themselves. Why? Because you people that are the followers, you have gathered to yourself many teachers. The Bible talks about this that preach what you want to hear many teachers many whatever so you are just like how they are products of many anointings you are product of many many teachers so if you hear someone that praises your papa that person is worth listening to because this person adores and loves your papa so what would they have to do for them to maintain the attention and the audience they have and be worth listening to logically i would say they have to preach themselves so when you hear Apostle Joseph Salman in the last video I made talking about the fact that if you want to talk about the faith movement, you cannot take away Kenneth Copeland out of it. That is his own belief. He said if you want to talk about healing, no matter what you say about Benny Hain, that Benny Hain is someone that you have to know for healing. Watch videos right here where Benny Hain himself has been investigated, not by me, but there in America. Hypnosis, a couple of other things. Even Benny Hain right now comes out to say that, you know, how he's repented from the prosperity gospel, a couple of things. See, they may sound to the... Crefodola himself has come out and said that, you know, he has been preaching the wrong message over the years when it comes to this whole um, giving and all that. Come on, later we are going to see all these things. But you people will never understand. So they would rather not wait upon the Lord and renew their strength. But go on to a fellow man to go and tap an anointing from him. But have you asked yourself a question? Do you know who that man is? Do you know who his God is? And every time, they, you people always bring up Elijah and Elisha. And I ask you people a question. Before Elijah anointed Elisha, God himself told Elijah to anoint Elisha to replace him. Elisha was there plowing the field, was a man on his own doing his own thing. God picked him, him from the field for him to succeed Eli uh, Elijah. Look at the period of time that Elisha served with Elijah for him to grow in the prophetical, for him to even grow that hunger of wanting to have the trouble portion of Elijah's anointing. Did Elisha out of the blue start chasing Elijah here and there, here and there to become, uh, to get his double anointing or to become like him? He was there doing his own thing. It was God himself that told Elijah that he has picked Elisha to succeed him if you are using that particular analogy. So where do we get all this whole idea of running here and here to go and look for somebody's anointing or to go and look to tap from someone? The disciples that Jesus himself moved with, were they the ones that went to Jesus and said they want to follow Jesus or Jesus was the one that called them to become his disciples? Think about that at the moment. 
But making disciples, these people have to work with you. Disciples is not by just sitting down and watching someone on the TV and listening to them. I always tell you people, don't believe everything you see on social media. These people, Elisha worked closely with Elijah for a period of time. For him to build that hunger, for him to want to be like Elijah. But even on that, God himself already wanted that for Elijah himself to succeed him. So what you saw happen at the point of which Elijah himself was taken up was not just a, a sign for Elisha himself, but to the other prophets themselves that saw it from a distance and believed that Elisha himself has gotten the double portion of Elijah's anointing. Had it been no one was there to witness it or something, would, do you think they would believe in the person of Elisha? Had it been the sea itself was not parted, the same way it was parted by Elijah before they crossed over and they saw the sea parted again for Elijah to come back, do you think they would believe him and even bow to him as more of like a leading prophet right now? But you don't read the Bible like that, you read it in the way you want to make it impress you. So you see someone, you just watch someone on TV, you, see, you don't know whether what they are doing there is Sakamaje or arranged miracles or whatever, already you want to go and tap. How have you worked with this person to know what God this person is serving? Is it the same God that you are serving or his own God or whatever? And someone will come out and say that the spirit of Jesus has not done anything. That is the spirit of uh, Ubat Angel. And all he has to preach is Ubat Angel. Listen to that and ask him a question. Christians, but we don't think anymore. Jesus has been kicked out and we have replaced it with men. That will come and give us celestial uh, experiences and stories. And we believe everything. Am I, do I, am I saying I don't believe them? Or am I saying, I don't, me, I don't care whatever celestial experiences you have. I don't care. What I care is the word of God and the truth itself being preached. Let those ones be your experiences. Share it, of course, to a plea of our faith. But let the truth always remain the truth. The scriptures. Elijah.